the news at noon starts right now. New this noon, a northeast side community shaken up after a carjacking attempt. Police tell us the suspect ran from the scene and tried to get into a nearby school. He did not make it inside and police did catch him shortly after. But here's how it all started. Police say they were called to investigate after someone said the suspect tried to steal their car. There was a struggle and a gun went off. That's when police say the suspect ran away and dropped a gun near East Terrell Hills Elementary. He tried to get inside, but he couldn't. Police found him near an AC unit on the property. No one was hurt. Crime Stoppers and San Antonio police are now offering a cash reward for information leading to an arrest in a deadly hit and run on the city's northwest side. Well, back on September 12th, Maria Martinez was walking across the street near Babcock Road and Fredericksburg Road. Investigators say she was not in a crosswalk and the area was not well lit. The driver in the truck stopped to help Martinez, but a driver in a light colored SUV hit both of them and that person did not stop. Crime Stoppers released an image of the driver's SUV, so right now it's not the clearest picture. However, officers tell us it was gray. Martinez died from her injuries. The driver of the truck was taken to the hospital. Right now it's not clear how he's doing. If you have any information about this case, you are asked to call Crime Stoppers at number 210-224-STOP. The northbound lanes of Loop 410 on the east side near the I-10 interchange are open now after a morning crash caused closures for several hours. The crash happened along the Loop 410 near East Houston Street exit. According to police at the scene, a car was stopped in the middle of the road and was eventually hit by a semi truck. The woman inside the car was unresponsive after she was pulled from her vehicle. Police say she was taken to the hospital with life threatening injuries. Let's look out there with live cam. OK, now we're already at 90 degrees. At least yesterday was what, 89 or <laughs> close well, to 90. And we had some clouds this morning, but I'll tell you, as I was on my way to Science with Sarah this morning, uh, it felt like, you know, when I, in, just the humidity was unbearable <laughs> at times. And the humidity is the case today. That's what's making it feel like it's well into the triple digits. Yeah, it's a hot one. Take a look at temperatures 90 in San Antonio, 90 in New Braunfels, 90 in Pleasanton, 90 in Floresville, in the mid 80s, though, in the Hill Country. But it feels like it's 99 in San Antonio. For the rest of the day, we're going to be looking at mostly clear skies, 96 for the high, feeling like it's in the triple digits, and a muggy evening with temperatures in the 80s. Now, here's something I want to talk about coming up in the forecast. September sizzles on, all right? We're going to have heat index above 100 degrees pretty much all week. As far as relief goes, there's a small possibility by next week to see those temperatures come down a little bit. And I do want to talk about the tropics. There's an area to watch over the next couple of weeks, but climatologically speaking, odds of another hurricane or tropical storm making it to Texas, well, they're pretty low. I'm going to go into some details about the tropics coming up in just a bit. Thank you, Sarah. Well, in case you missed it, this is either pretty cool or could be kind of annoying depending on your perspective. The prequel to a very popular show is filming right here in San Antonio. However, that means while Hollywood is in town, you will see some road closures to accommodate production on the Yellowstone sequel 1923. So the biggest impacts will be in the coming days around the Broadway area near downtown. All right, so let's check in on those road closures this week. Tomorrow, look for one on Broadway. It's from East Pecan Street to East Travis Street. This one's supposed to last until the 25th. Then, starting on Friday, these are the areas closed to drivers. Broadway from East Pecan Street to East Houston Street, East Travis Street to Jefferson to North Alamo Street, and Peacock Alley from Jefferson to North Alamo Street. These closures expected to last until September 24th, which is next Tuesday. All right, so let's look at this map. You can get a general idea of the areas impacted. You can see it mostly affects Broadway, not far from Travis Park. It's, of course, a little complicated, so you can check this out on our website website to get another look at all of these locations. The city says it expects filming to wrap up by September 27th, so you should see everything open and back up by then. Well, we are less than two hours away from hearing from the Federal Reserve on what changes it will make to interest rates. This will be the first time that the Fed lowers the interest rates for the first time in four years. So digital journalist Ivan Edetta is here to break down what those interest rate changes could mean for you and Ivan, how much do we think the Fed might lower those rates? 
Good afternoon, Stephanie. That's the big question right now. While it's not set in stone, many economists expect the Fed to go with a quarter percent cut or this time around. Now, the last time that the Fed cut interest rates was back in 2020. Small cut now could make it easier for people to borrow money without causing too much disruption to the economy. Now, a bigger rate cut would send a stronger message to investors and government officials, some of whom have been pushing for a half point cut. The Fed's decision directly impacts our standard of living, a strong economy helps keep unemployment low and wages stable. Now, if this decision can slow inflation without costing any jobs, it's a win for everyone. And for consumers, the biggest impact will be lower loan payments, which could mean affordable mortgages, car payments, and credit card bills. More rate cuts are anticipated in the coming months as the Fed will meet again in November and December. Now, we're going to be keeping an eye on that. And the Fed's decision is coming up at a news conference at 1.30 p.m. You can stream that on KSAT.com and on KSAT+. Plus. Stephanie? Thank you, Ivan. Well, on our homepage right now, we want to know what questions you have about interest rates. You can weigh in on that story and your questions could be answered on air. FBI Director Christopher Wray says his agents are working tirelessly to investigate the second apparent assassination attempt for former President Trump. ABC's Perry Russell reports the FBI is now also investigating a series of threatening letters sent to election officers at at least 16 states. Today, FBI Director Christopher Wray calls the second apparent assassination attempt on former President Trump an apparent attack on our democracy and democratic process. I want the American people to know that the men and women of the FBI are working tirelessly to get to the bottom of what happened. Trump back on the campaign trail last night. You know, only consequential presidents get shot at. Arkansas Governor Sarah Huckabee Sanders hosting Trump's Michigan town hall and taking an apparent swipe at Vice President Kamala Harris for not having biological children. So my kids keep me humble. (laughs) Unfortunately, Kamala Harris doesn't have anything keeping her humble. The Trump campaign still blaming Democrats' political rhetoric for the latest apparent assassination attempt, as some have called Trump a threat to democracy. There is no place for political violence in our country. Harris speaking at the National Association of Black Journalists slamming Trump for amplifying baseless claims of Haitian immigrants eating pets in Springfield, Ohio. You cannot be entrusted with standing behind the seal of the President of the United States of America, engaging in that hateful rhetoric that, as usual, is designed to divide us as a country. The FBI is now also investigating a series of threatening letters sent to election offices in at least 16 states, the letters containing white powder. Election offices in Wyoming and Kansas were evacuated. Sources tell ABC News the powder was found to be harmless. Perry Russell, ABC News, Washington. Coming up, a local nonprofit is working to help feral cats and they want to help a lot more furry friends, but they need some help how you can pitch in. Today, nonprofits are putting out the call, hoping the San Antonio community steps up in a major way. The Big Give officially kicks off today. And you can see the countdown is already on. (laughs) So between 6 tonight and 6 tomorrow evening, 400 nonprofits will benefit. Our Sarah Costa met with one of those nonprofits, the Bear Den Sanctuary, that hopes to raise thousands for a second location to help save San Antonio feral cats. This is Bearden Sanctuary. It is a forever home for unadoptable and feral cats, and we also spay and neuter in the community. That's one of our big, big projects. All these cats are from the streets of San Antonio. Some pulled from the euthanasia list at ACS or surrendered. They are trapped, fixed, and released if they have someone that provides food and outdoor shelter. If not, they are kept at the sanctuary located in Bulverde. Yes, Thumper. Yes, Thumper. Big challenge is that a lot of these cats and dogs, they have no feeders. So we're trying to make room for these cats who don't have feeders. Blake Fugie lives on the property and runs a nonprofit where she helps shelter and feed the hundreds of cats. And she knows them all by name. That's Chester. We pulled him from ACS. This is Layton. 
He has three legs. This is Oscar. He was found in a, a drainage ditch. It's kind of like high school, right? There's like little cliques of these cats. <laughs> so it's like the cool kids are over here and like the man kids are over here and the smoker sections over here. The sanctuary also worked with other nonprofits like the San Antonio Feral Cat Coalition and the Humane Society. A lot of times if they have an unadoptable cat, we'll take them in and trade them out for cats who tend to be adoptable. Since opening in 2021, the Bear Den Sanctuary has gotten calls to rescue 1,300 cats. This three acre property houses anywhere where from 150 to 200 cats at a time. That's why they hope to open a second location that's 25 to 30 acres that can home thousands of cats. As soon as we can get land, the next step is to trim trees around the property, to fence the whole property, and then, and then we can start bringing in cats once we have buildings and structures and all. That second property will cost around a million dollars to maintain. It's why she is hoping they can either get the property donated or get at least ten dollars to $20,000 donated for a down payment this upcoming Big Give. The Big Give for uh, September 18th, September 19th is to raise enough money to at least make a down payment on a piece of land. She says she doesn't want to operate like most sanctuaries. She wants to continue to work with other nonprofits and the community and think outside the cat box to help a massive problem in San Antonio. I think with a problem at the magnitude that it is, it needs to be something that hasn't ever been done. And so I think we just need to go for it and expand and dream big and just know that it's possible to save all these cats. Sarah Costa, KSAT 12 News. Well, the big give officially kicks off again tonight at 6 p.m. and will run until Thursday at 6 p.m. To donate to Bear Den Sanctuary or any of the other 400 nonprofits, you can head over to BigGiveSA.org or you can visit KSET.com. That's such a unique and necessary service that they're offering. I mean, I feel like all of us have seen that. I bet they're trying to expand, I know, too. I know. A lot Give of those cats. cats a place to go. I got my one Nora. She Aww. lives inside. <laughs> He is the life, man. And I wish we could all be inside all day, every day with this kind of heat. Yes. Temperatures are well on their way to the upper 90s this afternoon. Hey, we did see molds climb yesterday, and today they're at uh, 970, so they're actually moderate. Fall elm and ragweed are present, but they're also low. Now, the aquifer, the aquifer is down a tenth of foot over the past 24 hours, and again, Temperatures are on the rise. This is what it feels like out there. It feels like 99 in San Antonio. It feels like 100 in Floresville and 101 in Nixon Smiley. I'll be back to talk a little bit more about the tropics this time of year and why it's a little bit more difficult to see uh, any kind of tropical rain across parts of Texas coming up in a bit. Well, homecoming season is just around the corner and you could help us with an upcoming case that explains. So this is all about mums and where the tradition came from and how it became such a thing in Texas. Now we want to see your mom scan this QR code to go to the KSAT Connect website, upload your picture of a homecoming mom to the sports channel under the high school football category. So I know we were asking around the yeah. newsroom. Okay. I, I've spent a I've been in Texas a long time, mm -hmm. but I grew up in California and I moved here and said, "What the heck is going what on are with moms? these?" Oh my it was a lot. It's I just lot. I just thought that that was the way. I guess because I grew up here, <laughs> that I was the way. <laughs> I didn't realize that you know other it's parts of the country yeah, yeah. didn't okay. have moms. So I grew up here in Texas. I grew up in San Antonio, but my parents both did not oh, grow up in oh, Texas. Okay. My dad's from Georgia. My mom's from Iowa. So I never got a mom. I didn't get <laughs> oh, anything. No. And I, was, I felt Rude. so left out because all my other friends have these moms and stuff. I mean, my parents were great parents growing yeah. up. They're just not they from just, Texas, they so just they just didn't, didn't know. know. We can make you one. Okay, so yes. and oh, I want one too. So. Well, my, well, I was like, mine are, mine are faded. You know, but you actually, still have them. That's how special them. they are. I, well, I, uh, hopefully, I don't know, mom. <laughs> hopefully, so we're Where at mom's they? house. We'll see. But I just like they quickly because like our colors are blue, mm, and like over no. the years the ribbons like kind of like a purplish yeah. color. So. Where'd you Where'd you go to high school again? John John Jay. John Jay. That's what I was gonna oh, yeah. say. I love that. Yeah, we want to see yours because I need to I need to check out the array, see all of the options. I want to see that. Yeah. There's a lot more now. I mean, it's I, a bigger deal, right? It's oh, uh, okay. well, a lot more options. You know, back when I was there, it was just like the the biggest thing was like, oh, you could put a teddy bear, like in the middle of the month, like a like a little baby teddy bear. Oh, you can do bear. so much. I'm looking forward to that case. Yeah, that explains. All right, let's go ahead and take a look outside right now. 
Courtney, Toy Story clouds. Oh yes, she calls them Toy Story clouds because they look they're so picturesque, right? Oh. Yeah, I call them fair weather cumulus clouds. A little bit more technical <laughs> <laughs> uh, because they really don't bring much uh, in the form of rain, and it's usually they usually form when it's uh, pretty humid and we get a lot of daytime heating, which is what we're dealing with right now. So it's 90 in San Antonio, feels like 99, 89 in New Braunfels, feeling like 99, 88 in Del Rio. Feels like 95, and it's 85 in Kerrville, feeling like 90. Here's a look at the visible satellite. You can see those fair weather cumulus there. Uh, we started off the day with more clouds than we did yesterday, but I think we're still on pace to see very similar weather to yesterday, where we reached a high of 95, 96. The thing is, it's more humid today than it was yesterday, so we are going to have a bit more of a heat index. I think a peak heat index of 103, 104 around San Antonio this afternoon, right around 5 o'clock. 105 is what it's going to feel like in New Braunfels 102 in Pleasanton showing you the nation because even though we're baking here in Texas, there's other parts of the nation that are dealing with some good rain. I mean, take a look at this characteristic comma cloud up here across parts of the northern Midwest. This is a low pressure system that's bringing rain to parts of Montana and uh, areas across the Midwest. And then we've got some more rain for areas in the northeast closer to New York City. This is kind of the weather pattern we've been stuck in rain all around Texas. But here in Texas, we have been looking at this high pressure. High means dry, high pressure pushing down, preventing showers and storms from developing in the vertical. And as we look at the future cast, that heat high is going to be the main thing over the next couple of days. There is, however, going to be a digging trough of low pressure by Friday, and that might just be enough to help kick that heat high off to the east just a little bit so that by Sunday, Monday of next week, temperatures could come down a little bit. I still think it's going to be very hard for us to see any rain uh, even from Sunday, Monday and Tuesday. So little to no chance for rain in the forecast, unfortunately for us, and we need some more rainfall. Now, I want to take a moment and I want to transition and talk about the tropics because Climate Prediction Center is watching this area uh, in the Caribbean Sea. It has a good potential over the next two weeks. So we're talking September 25th through October 1st for some kind of tropical development. Now, this time of year, it is really difficult for storms to make landfall in Texas. Usually they encounter cold fronts or troughs and end up going to the east. And you can actually see that. I want you to look at your screen. So since 1990, these are late September and October landfalls of hurricanes and tropical storms. And you can clearly see that most of them turn to the east and do not impact Texas. Now our friends out in Louisiana, the Gulf Coast states and Florida definitely want to be on alert for whatever develops in late September and October. But here in Texas since 1990, there's really only been one or two landfalls from tropical storms or hurricanes. So climatologically speaking, we shouldn't have too much to worry about, but it is going to be something we're going to be keeping our eye on. I'm sure as you look at some of these names of these storms, some of you at home might remember some of them and the impacts to the Gulf Coast states. As for our forecast here in San Antonio, upper 90s in the coming days, and the fall equinox is on Sunday. Coming up, we're going to talk a little bit about what that equinox is. And there was a spectacle in the sky last night, a partial lunar eclipse. I've got some pictures from some folks on our KSAT Connect that I'd love to show as well. That moon was gorgeous. Yes, pretty beautiful. Nice and bright. Yes, it really was. I saw some amazing pictures too yeah. on, on Instagram, so upload them. I'm going to show them from KSAT Connect. Thanks, Sarah. Well, record number of Americans are traveling to other countries, and it is time that for the State Department to modernize the way you renew your passport how the changes will make it easier for you to travel abroad. Well, tools a San Antonio man uses every day for work stolen in minutes and captured on camera. It's one of more than 34,000 reports of theft made in San Antonio this year. As our Daniele Ibada explains, these crimes are something that the San Antonio Police Department has been trying to address. Leave our window open now. A crime of opportunity unfolding in minutes. It makes my 
blood boil because it's in broad daylight. You don't anticipate that. Danielle Gomez still can't believe it happened. His pants are down. Like he literally takes the time, picks up his pants, looks in the bed of my husband's truck, goes once, goes twice. Like there's no fear in this individual. So literally they just hit your house and left. Mm -hmm. On August 26th, San Antonio police say this car pulled up to Gomez's home on the northwest side. Gomez's husband had just gotten home to grab lunch. His tools sat in the truck bed. I mean, it was four to five pieces of Milwaukee. It's called a pack out um, and they were heavy and expensive. Gomez says the tools are worth around $5,000. It was a huge hit because he works construction and he tries to carry every tool he may possibly need for the day. It's a problem because it's a it's a crime of opportunity. Data shows those chances are dropping. From January to August of this year, there are more than 34,000 reports of theft and larceny. Compared to the same time last year, that's down nearly 6%. Chief Willie McManus says it's a common crime in need of a solution. Ideally, I'd like to see a property crime um, program um, and something that possibly in the future we can work that with UTSA. Until that solution comes, Danielle says her family is working on making for the huge hit to their finances and sense of security. It sucks. You feel invaded. You know, you feel um, not safe in your own neighborhood. Danielle Ibarra, KSAT 12 News. Overall, San Antonio police say crime is down 3% compared to last year. One of the department's biggest issues, car thefts, have dropped off sharply this year. But other things are up, most notably property damage and vandalism crimes, what SAPD calls criminal mischief. Those are up by more than a third. Though it wasn't immediately clear what's driving it, the police chief said he frequently hears complaints about people experiencing homelessness causing damage downtown. But there's a new way to renew your passport that can save you how you can do this all from home. And you might notice some changes the next time you open the Uber app, why hailing a late night ride could be quicker. Earlier this month, we told you about a crash in which six children were ejected and sent to the hospital. San Antonio police reported there were seven children in the SUV in total and only one was wearing a seatbelt. Now we checked with San Antonio police and 18 days later, no arrests have been made in this case. Well, now the Texas Department of Public Safety is highlighting how important it is for drivers to make sure their passengers are safe. As Patty Santos explains, that is especially true when you have little ones in the car. Not wearing a seatbelt can be a deadly mistake. The National Highway Traffic Safety Administration says vehicle crashes are the leading cause of death for kids under the age of 13. In 2022, over 1,000 kids were killed in crashes. Here's how we protect them. Make sure the car seat fits properly. Don't buy used car seats that are expired or have been involved in crashes. A seatbelt has to fit properly across a child's abdominal area and along the neck. If you have a car seat that you no longer need and it's not expired, consider donating it. There are plenty of local nonprofits that will take them. This is a life saving thing that you can do to reach out to your community by offering your used car seat and bringing it into us. And what better way to, to say this, this is what I'm doing to prevent a horrific accident happening to a child. This is what you can do to help us by donating your used car seats. The cost of car seats has skyrocketed in the last few years. Coming up in the next hour, you're going to hear why this recent accident involving six kids has prompted a demand for car seats. Patty Santos, KSAT 12 News. Well, if you can help or if you need help, we have information on our website. You can also try calling 211 and they can connect you to organizations that might be able to give you a car seat. Some of them might require parents to take a class. Worth it, worth it. All right, let's look outside at live cam. The Toy Story clouds are cute, Sarah, but they're not making us happy if we step outside and feel the humidity. The Toy Story clouds are cute. That's about the only positive thing about this weather. So love that you found the positive, Court. You're welcome. But yeah, it's going to be hot this afternoon. I would say up from now up until 6 p.m., expect toasty temperatures. At least it'll feel pretty good tonight if you want to take an evening stroll. Although you won't be able to see a partial eclipse like you did yesterday. 
The moon, though, will be big and bright. As we take a look at temperatures throughout the day today, we're going to be up to 96 for the high temperatures in the 80s. All right, here's what I wanted to show you. Last night, this was the harvest moon rising. Had that orangish color because it was on the horizon as it was rising. But then toward about 945, this was what was really cool. Partial eclipse. This is out in Yavaldi. A uh, beautiful picture of that partial eclipse. You can see part of that moon on the north uh, the top left corner is uh, covered by the Earth's shadow. This is from Carlos Pena. This is out in San Antonio as well. This was in Elmendorf. And then this is from Skywatcher. A beautiful picture there of the moon partially eclipsed. Now, why is it called the harvest moon? It's called the harvest moon because it's the closest full moon to the autumnal equinox, which will be Sunday at 744. What is the autumnal equinox? Well, because the Earth is tilted, the autumnal equinox is happening on Sunday at 744. It's when the Earth's axis is tilted neither toward nor away from the sun. It's parallel or perpendicular, uh, parallel to the sun. Uh, nearly equal amounts of daylight and darkness at all latitudes. So that's why it's called the autumnal equinox. We'll have around about the same amount of daylight as we do the, the uh, nighttime on Sunday. But coming up, we're going to talk about how it's not going to feel like autumn at all. At least we do have a chance for those temperatures to be a little bit cooler as we start next week. Details ahead. All right. Thank you so much, Sarah. Now to some changes to Uber accounts. The app is launching a new rider verification feature this morning. ABC's Gio Benitez has a look at how it works and what it means for passengers. New changes to your Uber account. Would you say this is almost like a TSA pre-check for Uber? Exactly. And TSA pre-check makes everyone on the plane feel safer. GMA getting an exclusive look at the new verification process used to make sure riders are who they say they are. So how does it work? So most Uber users will be automatically verified. You won't have to do anything. But if you do, this is how you do it. So now I'm going to select identity verification, add your ID. I've got my ID right here. Choose ID. And it's basically going to ask me to take a photo of the ID and a selfie because it's going to match the two photos. I'm taking a photo of my ID and now it's asking me to take a selfie. And there we go. You've been verified. A blue check mark on your account showing you completed the process. This extra level of security coming after several recent attacks on drivers like this one in August in New York, where a woman pepper sprayed her Uber driver and was charged with assault. But Uber says this new feature benefits riders too. Late night, etc. If you have a verified badge, you have an advantage over someone who might not be verified uh. in a driver accepting a ride. Uber driver El Denise Jackson says she will be more likely to pick up verified drivers for the peace of mind. If you're verified, it just helps us say, yep, we'll get that ride. You'll get a ride quicker. It just makes life easier for everybody. And that was ABC's Gio Benitez reporting. For a lot of people, verification will come automatically. But if not, you should get an alert when you open Uber, this, the Uber app this week. Well, for the first time ever, Americans can now renew their passports online. The State Department says its pilot passport renewal program is now fully available to the public. That's as long as you meet the criteria. So this is for adults 25 or older who have had a passport before. With this new system, you will no longer have to fill out and print that paper application, mail a check, or make an appointment. You can upload your photo and apply completely online uh, without having to do anything in person or send anything through the mail. Well, it is pretty simple. You just create an account to start the application process on the State's Department website. Then you can enter your old passport information and upcoming travel plans. However, make sure to follow the guidelines, so no selfies. Your picture needs to have a plain white background, and the photo has to be recent. So you will need a debit or credit card to check out online. All right, we're going to take a look outside at 151 at Loop 410 East. That's the trans guide camera we're looking at. There is a crash of some sort. TxDOT's listing it as a minor crash. What we see out there is some type of wrecker. You have the lights on. It looks like they're loading up a car on there. Traffic slightly moving stuff. Yeah, well, hopefully uh, it'll be cleared up pretty soon. Uh, again, you can see it's just slow moving. It looks like that one lane is blocked, but yeah, hopefully the crews will get that cleared up very soon. You can see there's people responding right mm -hmm. there off to the side of the camera. One thing you don't want 
when it's this hot outside is to have a flat tire or something like that because it gets really hot out there with all that asphalt. Temperatures climbing into the 90s right now. Molds are moderate at 970. Fall elm and ragweed are present in low amounts. Another day, same story. Aquifer continues to fall. It's down a tenth of a foot in the past 24 hours. I've got a look ahead to your forecast for the remainder of September. It's going to stay pretty hot, but there is this small relief in our forecast. I'll be talking about that coming up. Middle of the afternoon and yeah, already in the 90s. I mean, <laughs> I just went out there just in my car because I was uh, paranoid. I thought I had brought chocolate. Well, I did buy oh, chocolate oh to bring oh to God. work, oh but God. I but I left it at home. Well, I'm glad I left it at home and not in the car. I just went out I'm to I'm going to go sure. out on a whim and say that that chocolate is for Halloween. Of course. But there I we go. <laughs> bring some of Halloween candy so to cute. work. That tomorrow. is awesome. Tomorrow. So sweet. Um, well, I'm glad it's not melting. Thank you. I, guys, that's okay. a true fear, though. Yeah, I, I was like, oh, no. I'm taking applications and suggestions for synonyms for hot at this point. Okay, <laughs> okay we got hot. We got melting. Sizzling. Sizzling. Well, warm doesn't describe it. Though. Annoying. <laughs> okay, well, that's On a new fire. one. On fire. On fire. Fiery. Yeah. You could even go with soupy at times because yeah. it's very so humid, humid outside. Yeah. I like toasty. Toasty. Yeah. yeah. Toasty temps for toasty Courtney. Temp. There you go. Look <laughs> All through. right. 90 outside right now. Feeling like 99 because of the humidity uh, and southeast winds at about 10 miles an hour. You can see we do have some more clouds out there than what we had this time yesterday, but the humidity is higher than it was yesterday. So even though temperatures may be a degree or two shy of what they were yesterday at times, it feels just as hot because of the higher humidity. So it's a bit of a give and take. And again, I know I've showed this image, but I think it really drives the point home. San Antonio in Texas are one of the hottest places across the nation. Uh, you can see this is a look at our forecast high temperatures, upper 90s for most of Texas today. And you look out at Phoenix, Arizona, which is actually cooler than Texas today. And San Antonio's 94 for the high in Phoenix. And wouldn't you love to be in Salt Lake right now, Billings, Boise, where highs are in the 60s and 70s, even out toward uh, Washington and Charlotte, those temperatures in the 70s out there too. It, it would be one thing if we were hot with a dry heat, but we're hot and humid too. Take a look at dew points. Dew points are in the 70s. That's at the top of the scale there. And you can see that a ton of moisture extends all the way up to Canada uh, as we're under the influence of a ridge of high pressure. But around the cooler air, we've also got pleasantly dry air. Here in San Antonio and Texas, there's that heat high, that big blue bully as Adam Caskey likes to call it in the summertime, but it's over us right now as we're heading into fall and it's gonna stay with us for the rest of the week. Now there is some minor good news, okay? There's gonna be this trough that digs across the Four Corners region. It may just be strong enough to help push that heat high a little bit off to the east. Does that mean rain for us? No, not really, but it does mean temperatures are going to be a little bit cooler than where they are at right now. So when we look at the forecast highs in the heat index over the next five days today. Tomorrow heat index well above 100 degrees. But as we head into Sunday again, notice that uh, because that heat high moves a little bit off to the east, we start to see temperatures come down a few degrees as well as the heat index too. But we're still running about five degrees over the average. So looking at the case 12 hour forecast in the coming Coming hours. We're going to be at 96 for the high today, mostly sunny by the uh, later uh, afternoon hours and in the evening it'll be mostly clear. If you can tolerate temperatures in the 80s, and a lot of us can, I mean we're from this area where it gets above that quite often, it's going to be pretty nice this evening. So go out inside and enjoy that evening walk out there tonight. Rainfall forecast over the next seven days. As I mentioned, rain is just not in our cards. In fact, most of the rain is going to be located across parts of the Midwest. Think about the Corn Belt, Iowa, Nebraska. They're going to enjoy some rain, but we're going to be rain free in the coming days. Temperatures in the upper 90s through Friday, not technically records, but close to records. Then autumnal equinox on Sunday. And I guess autumn here in t San Antonio means temperatures a couple degrees cooler. That's it. I'll be we'll be back with more news after the Happy National Cheeseburger Day. Yeah, it's a great day to celebrate. I think so too. <laughs> well, whether you love a double with the works or a single plain and cheesy, there are a ton of great burger places right here in the Alamo City. Fiona, Jen, and Jada from SA Live take us on a cheeseburger tour of San Antonio. National Cheeseburger
Burger Day is my kind of day, and I am here with Connie at Chunky's Burgers and More. Hi, Connie. Hi, how are you doing? I am doing well, and I am excited because we got some food, some nice cheeseburgers oh, yeah. here in front of us. So tell me a little bit about Chunky's Burgers and More. Uh, we're just a small, locally owned uh, family business here, and we uh, just like to make some really awesome, amazing burgers. So, uh, you know, with National Cheeseburger Day, I see we have quite a, a few. So tell me about what we have in front of us. Let's start here. What is so this? So right here, this is a triple cheeseburger. And it has Gouda, it has Pepper Jack, and it has cheddar cheese on it. But we also have White American, Monterey Jack, and our homemade queso. And cream cheese. Homemade queso. I'm looking at queso coming out of this burger. Yes, so tell me what this is. This one has our homemade queso. This is our big chunk. It's one of our customer favorites. I ate this one every day for a month when I started working here. Ooh. Okay, and I love a good queso because it's, it's drizzling and oozy down and I can just take some fries and, mm -hmm. you know, use it as the dipping sauce too. So and what kind of fries bacon. are these? And bacon, right. Bacon. Who can be mad at bacon? I know, yeah. <laughs> these are garlic parmesan fries. One of our top sellers It's mm. uh, garlic and, of course, parmesan cheese with some chives. Dip it in some ranch. It is addicting. I, you know, this all smells amazing and I'm also looking at what I'm assuming to be lemon pepper yes, wings. Yes, lemon pepper wings. Listen, I love cheeseburgers we made and them I love just some for wings you. too. I know it's not for cheeseburgers. <laughs> Day, but we can slide these in too. So is that oh, what yeah, these are? Yeah. Yep, um, lemon pepper wings. Lemon pepper wings. Oh, love this. So much stuff here. Well, Connie, thank you so, so much. I'm going to get ready and have some of this burger too. But yes. take a bite of this too. Cheeseburgers. Cheeseburgers. Yes, I am here at Tycoon Flats on North St. Mary's. And Riley McCallum, general manager, joins me. And we are celebrating cheeseburgers, cheeseburgers today. And this is just a sampling of the yum yum they've got here. What is that one? We have our signature garlic sauce burger, which is a signature sauce, sometimes spicy, sometimes a little sweet, with a bunch of peppers roasted off at fresh every morning. Look at that cheese then, on it, yes, too. Yes, that cheddar cheese, always with cheddar cheese. And then we have our honey barbecue bacon cheddar burger, Ooh. always with the onion rings on this side, extra cheesy. That's the good goo, always, like when you pull the it apart. Good yeah, the yes. good cheese goo. Okay. And then we have our, our Monte Cristo burger with our mozzarella and fried Canadian bacon and our homemade raspberry preserves on top. This location and, and the one on Austin Highway, yes, right? Yes, we will be happily celebrating National Cheeseburger Day with all of them. Get them a half pound patty, third pound patty, or a smaller bike version. All right. We are celebrating National Cheeseburger today by bringing you to a San Antonio staple. Chris Madrid has been around since 1977. I am here with Richard Peacock, the owner. Welcome. Thanks for having me. Glad I, to I, have you here. I used to come here as a kid. So it's bringing back some memories. Lots of memories in these walls for yes. a lot of people. Yes, who is Chris Madrid? Chris Madrid was the neatest guy, uh, a guy that, along with his wife, started this restaurant uh, back in 1977 out of what we have maintained, which is this old 1920s era gas station, and just created something uh, in the years that followed that's really special, I think, to a lot of San Antonio. Oh, yeah, so many memories made here. Now, we are talking cheesy goodness. What do we have here in front of us? Well, we have what we call our cheeseburger, uh, which a lot of people order uh, because that's more to their liking. But what put us on the map, what's so iconic is the cheddar cheesy, Ooh. which uh, everybody pretty much can identify just by taking a look at it. I mean, how, how, is that two slices of cheese in there? Or it's just not, it's just a cheese? lot of ounces. It's ounces. about six ounces, ounces. Per, okay. per burger. Yeah. I hear you had a deal for our viewers today if they come in. We do, if they come in this afternoon from three to six, uh, we're gonna give them a chance to spend the uh, Chris Madrid's wheel of prizes. And uh, depending upon what they land on, they could get a percentage off their burger, they could get the whole cheeseburger uh, for free, they could get fries or drinks or our milkshakes, our handmade milkshakes that we have. So just trying to make it fun. Uh, you know, a good excuse to, to make it fun and, and do something neat like that. All right, well thank you Richard so much. Should I dive into this one? Well, absolutely. Okay, what's your go-to burger? Uh, it's probably either that or the tostada burger that we do. Tostada, okay. We'll have to come back for that one. I'm going to take a bite here. Mm. Good job. Good choice, Ooh, good choice. Making me hungry, look at the <laughs> cheese. Look at the cheese. <laughs> Wish they brought back some. I okay, know. Maybe great. next time. <laughs> well, remember, SA Live is now in its new time slot, so that's 10 a.m. weekdays right after GMSA at 9. But you can always get SA Live content on demand. Just go to salive.com or download our KSAP Plus app. 
All right, highs in the upper 90s in the coming days and humidity will stay high too. Now, I want you to take a look at the morning lows. Morning lows do come down a little bit as we head into next week, and that's because that heat high is going to be nudged to the east just a bit as we officially start fall on Sunday. But still, highs in the low 90s to start next week and no rain chances. All right, we were talking about yes. heat synonyms. What you got for me, While guys? you were doing your weather, we looked it up. <laughs> okay. okay. Balmy. Balmy is a good one. Interesting. That, that, boiling. 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 Uh, I like, can I go to that one? Yes. Like, I love blazing hot. Blazing hot. There like, we oh, go. Yeah. All right. <laughs> and our favorite is spicy. Spicy. Spicy <laughs> spivey with your forecast, oh, ladies I love and it. gentlemen. Oh, that's a good one. <laughs> Very appropriate. <laughs> Have a good day.